Welcome back, everybody. Uh, I don't think I need to introduce you, but I will. I'm joined today by Ken and Roberta Williams. Uh, I'm going to have a little Q&A, a little talking about their new title in production, Colossal Cave 3D. Um, before we jump into the stream, though, we have some amazing uh, video to show you. It's going to be pretty cool. Um, you guys have seen this already, so oh, yeah. yeah, it's going to be good. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Go Ken and Roberta Williams' fairy tale began 50 years ago as teenagers, who, in late 1972, married just one year out of high school. By 1979, they were living happily ever after. Ken had fulfilled his life dream of becoming a computer programmer, while Roberta, between computer jobs of her own, was busy raising their two small sons. One day, Ken carried home from work a teletype connected to a computer at MIT. On it, he discovered a text game simply called Advent. He ran it, and the first words displayed would change their lives forever. You're standing at the end of the road before a small brick building. He showed this to Roberta, who immediately took over and played the game for weeks. When she finished, having earned all 350 points, she said to him, I love that game, and I have a game idea of my own. Will you program it for me? Maybe with graphics? I'm calling it Mystery House. Together, they formed Sierra Online to develop more games. Roberta designed many hit products. And over the next 18 years, Sierra grew to over 1,000 employees, with Ken as CEO. Sierra went public on NASDAQ in 1987 and was acquired in 1997. Roberta and Ken subsequently retired, built a home in Cabo San Lucas, Mexico, then bought a boat and circumnavigated the oceans for almost 25 years, running the boat themselves. Meanwhile, the game that had inspired Roberta went on to become famous. Microsoft published it as their first game, Apple also launched it as their first game. Not long after, Atari made it into a cartridge that sold a million copies. Over the next 45 years, the game known as Colossal Cave Adventure would be remade over 180 times. There are hundreds, if not thousands, of websites dedicated to it. An internet search finds 2.1 million references, and phrases such as Zizzy have entered our culture. In early 2021, while Ken and Roberta were pondering their next projects, the pandemic of COVID struck. Stranded at home, Ken needed a challenge and asked Roberta, what should I do? She suggested he write a book, and that he did. The History of Sierra Online. The book became a bestseller. Remembering his Sierra days, Ken became curious about the current games being programmed, which brought him to Unity. Wow, Ken exclaimed and started learning it. Roberta, I want to make a game. Do you have any suggestions? And she did have a big idea. Roberta said, We owe our wonderful lives to that old game I played and loved 45 years ago. What if we could remake it with Unity in 3D? And so, welcome to Colossal Cave 3D Adventure. Adapted for virtual reality and computers by Roberta Williams. Engineered by Ken Williams. Welcome back, everybody. I hope you enjoyed that amazing trailer. I watched that last week, and it's fantastic. So, Ken, Roberta, welcome. Um, Thank you for having us. Thank you. The honor is ours. Oh. And you guys are Thank superstars. You. And uh, of course, the chat uh, is very excited. They're, <laughs> they're all singing your praises. And oh. they're all saying Sierra, of course. But, you know, you're not Sierra anymore. You are now Cygnus Games? Did I say that? Cygnus. 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 Apologies. Cyg yeah, Cygnus. Cygnus Entertainment. Well, Cygnus is a, well, it's actually a constellation. 
Oh, really? I didn't it know is. that. I, it I'm, is. I'm not into dark. Like, why, why, why Cygnus? Like, why, what? what well, what? Um, it's the, uh, we, we got a boat. If you really want to know, oh, yeah. we oh, got a boat and it had to have a name. Uh -huh. And I was reading, I'm into history and I was mm -hmm. reading a, um, a history book. I think it was about ancient Sumerians or something. It was okay. like really ancient. And uh, and about uh, the zodiac and how it came about and uh, turns out that the constellation Cygnus is the swan. Oh. Um, and in ancient Greek, maybe even in Greek, I'm not really sure right now. Uh, Cygnus is a swan. That's the word. For, and if you think about baby, baby swans are called the cygnets. Oh, that's adorable. So <laughs> it's uh, yeah. And uh, the reason for the boat and now it's for our game and our company is uh, with the boat, the very, very first ancient mariners used the North, the Pole Star to navigate. Mm -hmm. And in those days, 10,000 years ago, the Pole Star was from the constellation of Cygnus. Exactly. And I liked that story. So I took that story to be our, the name of our boat, and I designed that, that logo. Mm -hmm. And it, it's Beautiful actually swan. on the back of our boat. Oh, wow, um, I didn't know that. Yeah, it is. It's actually on the back of our boat. And so when we were trying to come up with a name for our new company, we, I said, you know, I just love that logo. And I love the name. And so let's just use it. Yeah, it's a, it's a direction. It's, you know, a point. That, yes, that, that's it fantastic. is. That's fantastic. I wasn't aware of this before. We were talking in, in the, in, while the trailer was playing. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, that's a good question. And that's actually fantastic. That's lovely. Yeah. So let's get into the, the main part of the show in terms of, like, explaining and talking about book Colossal Cave 3D. Yes. Right. So, you guys, pandemic, as that video showed, you know, pandemic hit, and, you know, you decide you want to make a game. Yes. Of all the games, like, types you can make, why did you decide VR as the thing? Why was it, you know, that was the direction you took? What was... Well, originally, um, it wasn't planned for VR. Originally, we were planning okay. it for computer, mm -hmm. um, PCs, Macintoshes, um, and, uh, but on three, with 3D. Mm -hmm. And uh, Ken was, was learning Unity. It was one of the things he was doing when, during the, the pandemic. Of course. And uh, he was learning Unity. And I, was ask, I asked him what he, why he was, what, he was watching tutorials and learning how to program <laughs> it. Why are you doing that? And he said, uh, well, he was something to do just to learn, keep his programming uh, fresh that he doesn't Sharp, forget, yeah. you know, how to program. And he loves to program. And uh, I said, oh, okay. And so sometime later, I noticed he's still doing it. And I was, you know, a week or two later, you'd say, hey, you're still learning Unity? Well, you know, you must be thinking about a game or something. Uh -huh. And he said, well, actually, I am. And I said, really? What kind of game? <laughs> and, and he said, That's well. ticking in your brain. Yeah, like, okay. what kind of game? You know, because he's, he's not never, you know, he's, he ran Sierra. I was the CEO, and he's a programmer. He's a programmer, yeah. But he's never designed an actual game. And uh, so I was wondering if, if he had any game, I uh, game ideas. And he said, well, I do. And I said, well, what is it? And he said, well, there's a lot of, lot of people want to learn how to program. And uh -huh. I thought I could write a game that's sort of educational game to teach people the fundamentals of programming, okay. this, where they could program little games with this mm -hmm. and get the fundamentals. And I said, oh, so it's kind of like an education product, not just a game. Yeah. Well, yeah, sort of. And I said, okay. <laughs> and so I, you know, kind of went out. Sigh. And oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, she said, that's dumb. And that, and no, I didn't. <laughs> he said it the nicest way possible, yeah. I yeah. didn't think it was dumb, but it, it to me, it, it, I mean, um, I don't know. I'm not a programmer, so I'm, I'm not even going to go there. <laughs> but uh, but I, I went to bed that night, and I was just laying there, and I, for some reason, Colossal Cave popped into my head, and I have no idea why, but that happens to me sometimes, yeah. very often. Uh, something will just come, and it's almost like karma, I think. And the next day, I went in, and I, uh, Ken was in at his computer, and he was mm -hmm. probably trying to program Unity or something <laughs> like that. For his educational game. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and I went in, and, and I said, you know, I had an idea last night. And uh, you know, remember the game Colossal Cave? And he looks at me, and I said, well, what if we decided we could maybe try to do Colossal Cave, and we'll, because it'd be fun to put it with 3D graphics. Yeah. Since you're, t you know, it's Unity, and it's 3D, and it, that might be kind of fun. And, and he looked at me, kind of, eyes sort of brightened up a little bit. And a twinkle. <laughs> a little bit, you know, the eyebrows raising just mm -hmm. a little bit. And 
he didn't say anything. And I said, well, it's just an idea. And then I... You just waddled away. Like, yep. Walked out. <laughs> walked out. And, uh, and I came back in, I don't know, a couple hours later. It was about lunchtime. And, of course. And he said, oh, I already talked to Don, Don Woods. Okay. Uh, who was one of the, the original designers mm-hmm. for Colossal Cave, the other being Will Crowther. Mm-hmm. I said, you what? <laughs> You've never talked to him before, ever, before, I don't think. He says, no. I said, well, how did you know how to get a hold of him? And he said, oh, I have my ways. <laughs> I know people. Of course, uh, contacts. Yeah. And so I said, well, why did you call him? And he said, uh, well, I wanted to know if he actually owned the rights to Colossal Cave. Yeah. I said, really? You took me seriously? And he said, well... Well, you know, I was just checking, and uh, and and I said, "Well, does he have the rights? I mean, I mean, I don't know. Would we even be able to do it?" And he said, "Well, yeah. He basically said that as long as we we can do it if we want to, he doesn't. He didn't really own it per se, but people uh, honor the fact that he and Will Crowther designed it, and 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 uh, all that. And he said, well, as long as you don't try to." To take the rights for it yeah, or copyright it, it or oh, anything yeah, like that, of and every anybody who wants to can can do their own version. It's you know like an open source oh. project idea. Yeah. That's a f- like yeah, I think yeah, that's it is good. It's respectful of very respectful foundations. And, yeah, mm-hmm. and so uh, we said so. Apparently, it's fine, and so we started doing it. And but it but we absolutely do not own it, and other people can can do it if they want to. That's awesome. That's like, how that yeah, happened. That's uh, but don't tell them. <laughs> but don't but don't do it. Yeah, don't don't do it. It's our game. <laughs> no, no, no. It's not our game. It's tough not it's tough not. to top over. I'll tell you what yeah. we're doing is not easy. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. not easy at all. So that was when I heard when your project like, you know, you came back like and VR like VR is a beast like it's its own thing like you know, VR we had like Justin P Barnett he's an educator for like you know VR like it's a it's a tough beast and you know like you haven't been in the industry for a while so this is new tech you know whatever it is but it's fantastic that you were like okay I'm gonna try this and like I'm just gonna do yeah, it you're just gonna do it yeah just guns blazing All let's right. go yeah <laughs> let's so, yeah, do it do it it's gonna be awful but it's gonna yeah. be great like so you know it's a fantastic mantra to kind of go in for yeah but when when we started it it was it was a lot harder than we thought mm-hmm. and um. And I don't think it was just because we've been out of the business for 25 years. I hate to say it, but uh, but it is hard to do. Cause, and that's one mm-hmm. of the things we fi- found out. It isn't just hard for us; it's for everybody. For ev- no, yeah, it's for everybody. Um, it's not an easy beast. And uh, we've had to we've had to um, come on board and learn how to do this mm-hmm. quickly, yeah. quickly. And uh, but I think we're doing okay. Yeah, you have the demo on the show floor here today as well. So like, if you're at GDC, like, be sure to come and check it out. Like, it's an early build. Your guys are super open to feedback. You know, yes. you want to mm-hmm. you want to build the ideal colossal cave in 3D. So it's a fantastic uh, project. Yes. But um, I guess this is a question as well. Like, what surprised you most about the industry? And like, after coming back, you know, what what what's changed? No. Oh, why don't you answer that? <laughs> oh, a question okay. for me. Yeah. If you don't Woo. mind. Cool. No, it's absolutely fine, uh, either yeah, of you. Yeah. Um, I, you know, really nothing. Uh, how big it is. I mean, that's oh, yeah. the big surprise. When uh, we sold the company, we were kind of the biggest, and we weren't that big. Mm-hmm. I mean, now suddenly um, you see Activision being bought for $68 billion. Yeah. And you think, wow, what a, what a, I mean, and like this show, all the game developers here. Mm-hmm. And Unity being such a big, co- I mean, I was talking to somebody from Unity, and they were talking about having thousands and thousands of employees. Yeah, we exploded pretty quickly. It was yeah, very quick, like, wild. very good. And, um, so, I, yeah, I know, I, we kid each other that we're like Rip Van Winkle or something. We went to sleep for 25 <laughs> years, and uh, we were off doing other stuff. But uh, Rip and Roberta. Rip and Roberta. <laughs> and <laughs> Winkle. But <laughs> you guys were living. You were doing the things you wanted to do. You we were, cool like your yeah. boat as well. Like yeah. we spoke off stream about going. We to took Ireland. a little boat yeah. around the world and had a had a blast yeah. doing it, and then uh, doing this. And it is kind of a strange feeling, yet it's um, very familiar. Yet familiar. Yeah, it wasn't like very we did familiar. games for um, two weeks. I yeah, mean, we yeah, did them for time, yeah. almost twenty years. Yeah. So we uh, watched a lot of evolution and. And it's so much easier to build a game now using Unity. I mean, in the old days, there were no tools. Yeah. There was no graphic editors. There was no compilers even when we first yeah. started. So now just being able to write something and see something moving across the screen in minutes yeah. is a very cool feeling. <laughs> so 
as an engineer. Oh yeah, of course. Well, I, I, I'm as I'm, I'm only 27. I'm quite young, but uh, I had a lot of hand-me-down computers. But I remembered uh, coding. My first experience with like the game dev thing was putting in those for magazines, these code things, and putting in the exact game, like, coding it one for letter for letter, and then playing that. That was my experience as well. And like even like of course King Quest and the like, and um, that was part of it. So I, I, I fully understand that. Like it's very different like anyone can be a game dev now with like unity like when yeah. you coming back like mm-hmm. you, you, your first week there you were looking at tutorials like it was all all the information was there for you to access and you could yep. just do it so it's yeah it's fantastic I, I'm, I'm i'm so impressed that you guys took on vr of all the things like that and you're doing it you're actually doing it you've seen the builds like we're you're, actually doing you're it doing it yeah it's, it's <laughs> fantastic and yeah. like i know so uh, let's go jump back a little bit as well like you know colossal cave and that was the one that you had your idea on like yeah like let, let's say the why like why is colossal cave so important and to you? why did it pop into my yeah head? why was that the why was of all the things you know because uh colossal cave was the very first game that i played um i was in my early 20s and i had two little kids and, and was sort of floundering about around what to do with my life and mm-hmm. where was i gonna go i did have some experience with programming and um, and operating uh, IBM mainframe machines, I, I did that. So uh, I wasn't a complete novice with computers. You know, Ken being the you know the ultimate programmer. But um, so I've been around a little, but trying to figure out what to do. And I played this game. Ken was working as a contract programmer for uh, Children's Hospital in Los Angeles. Oh, lovely! And he was as it, you know night uh, so like a night job. Mm-hmm. So he was was bringing home a teletype machine from. From the from the children's hospital to work on at night, and on it was the he could get into the mainframe computer at, at the hospital and work from home, and uh, on it was uh, was a game called Advent. Okay. And Advent stood for adventure, and so uh, he said, "Hey, Roberta, you know," he went in to see what it was, and it started out uh, as our game does. You know, you're you're standing at the end of a road, in front of you is a little brick, or is a is a brick building, mm-hmm. and uh, and and he said, "Look, what you can you can get into this like a story, and you could you could talk to it. You could type in one or two words, and it'll talk back to you." And I said, "It will talk back to me." <laughs> Fascinating. I, I said, oh, um, wow. And, and he said, yeah, sit down and have a keyboard. Mm-hmm. And I started doing one and two word sentences or, you know, little short verbs and nouns. And it was answering back, was taking me into this cave and into this story. And I got very involved to the point where I couldn't quit it. And I just I just had to keep playing for a couple of weeks and get and got got done with it. Wanted to write more like it. There weren't any more like it. I, I sat down and I designed my own game, Mystery wow. House, which was the first game, and that and, and Ken programmed it, of course, and uh, that that turned into Sierra. Okay. I mean, that's how Sierra came about. Had I not played Colossal Cave, um, which was called also uh, the original adventure, I don't think I would not have done it. I wouldn't have. Do, I wouldn't have known how to do it, and um, and Sierra would never existed. Wow. Like and so it's like coming full circle. Yeah, like, like coming back from you know being on like you know you you, you, you were in the industry for a while, but like coming back and this is the thing. It's the beginning of this new era for you guys. That's yep. it's amazing. Yeah. Like you're it was time to do it. I think I just felt to me it was such a a great game. It's a it's a wonderful design, um, and I I've done twenty adventure games and I've been in this in this business. I know it, and I still think that Colossal Cave is is m- pr- probably better than any design I ever did. Really? It's a great design. Yeah, yeah, as we're getting into it, we keep being shocked by how much is there. How much is there. Yeah, and how deep it is. I mean, there's all kinds of, like, early AI and stuff where it's studying how you're playing and adjusting the puzzles. Oh, okay. I mean, all these oh, yeah. things that we just never did in our games no, and probably should did. have. No, it follows you. They, it, it's almost like little spies that they programmed into the into the original ah. design. That no, they know exactly what you're doing and when you are, and how the game adjusts based. They on were all so that. far ahead of their time. Yeah. Oh yeah, that, that really is very nice. big brain. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's and very. That's why deep. the game went on to be known. I mean, that everybody you talk to kind of knows X Y Z Z Y. Yeah. Oh yes. E Fi Fo Fu and Plu and all right. those magic words. So it's it's very deep, very intricate. Uh, but yet not hard necessarily. Yeah, like it's uh, accessible. Like my m- my mother played. <laughs> yes, it's as well. like, yeah, yeah, she was a big Star Trek fan, and that was one of her first games as well. Yeah, like, so yeah. That, yeah, that's awesome. Like, mm-hmm. um, I was gonna, I was gonna ask a question there, like, but 
did you are you guys using the source code like how are you actually just playing the, the game source code. I you do. Oh, oh yeah. my God! So yeah. you playing? We all, all it, our whole team has it. I mean, that's yeah. amazing. And uh, in Fortran, and oh, okay, it, it was originally written in Fortran. And every and time there's a question, we send them back to the source code. <laughs> well, me too. I've gone we'll over. The, I've gone over the source code many times, uh, trying to uh, to translate and reimagine uh, this game for for VR um, and for just. Well, we want to be authentic. Of course, we want it yeah. To we be all, authentic. You want to keep that core experience like, like you felt as well. Like, it, yeah. John, this is probably going to be a first experience for a lot of people, like yeah. a, a new generation yeah. for Castle Cave. Like, mm -hmm. it, that's what it will be. And um, mm -hmm. like, I, I was lucky enough that I had cousins that would be able to pan me on stuff. But like, there's so many people who haven't experienced Castle Cave, and this will be that entry point for them. Mm -hmm. And that, that's actually amazing. Well, <laughs> it's um, you know, I do want to say that the, the design, a, a design of a game just like a good book um, mm -hmm. and you might want to eventually be, could be made into a movie mm -hmm. good design of a game which this is is timeless yeah it, it's just because it was in text at one point the design is still the design yeah and I wanted to sort of prove that so I I could take this design and um, and I'm now putting it with 3d graphics and sound and music sound effects and yeah. narration and um, characters that are moving and you interact with um but it's the same design yeah it's exactly the same design and and i wanted people to know that it, it that it is and should experience it like as you said like you were the designer as well like you you you, you have a breadth of experience with design so you really know how important that is like because back in the day that's what it was it was programming and design and like yeah and like later a little bit later on some art cuts are getting involved but um the f like yeah it's that core design loop is super important. Even nowadays, like a lot of people are like, oh, really good graphics, but then it's terrible design. Like that's not a game. Like you're not playing anything. The but game yeah. is the design. Yeah, it, fully. It, it really is. It's it is the design, and it's uh, and and right now it's in it's in Fortran form. <laughs> but so you you take it and you just and you understand the Fortran and the, and the programming for it. You read it. You can see exactly what the game is and how it's yeah. supposed to work. And 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 so you put it in graphics. And the programmers um, reprogram it. Point at me. <laughs> <laughs> and he's doing a lot of it, a lot of the programming. Yeah. Quietly just working away yes. programming. Uh, yes, like he is. Is she a good boss? <laughs> uh, she's a tough boss. Actually, he's the boss. Uh, oh, I don't know. Oh, he I calls know. himself. He calls himself the ringleader. Yeah, the ringmaster. Yeah, the ringmaster. Ring yeah. Ring yeah. See, that's the boss. The ringmaster just makes sure the circus is keeping going. You're like uh -huh. at the top. Yeah. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes, <it's, laughs> sometimes it's hard to know who's the boss. Oh, of course. It's, it's a I'm the boss. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a team effort, really. Like yeah. honestly, yeah. I guess uh, we have. We, if okay. anyone in the chat as well, we'll have some questions as well. If anyone would like to ask something regarding the game, and but I have some questions as well. Like you know, as you said, it was text based originally. Like that, that was the whole thing. What are those challenges? I guess then. Trying to like reestablish, make sh like getting it as close because you want to you want to get that initial feel. Like, what was the challenges? I guess trying to get it to that three D world because it's it's completely it's a different ball game. Like, um, for me, it's uh, what to do with. Well, yeah, we know we were going to do graphics, mm -hmm. but what are we? That there was two issues. One was what style of art mm -hmm. to to do. Um, and, and we went through all different kinds of styles, you know, s realistic mm -hmm. or s real stylized, more cartoony or something in between. And, um, and we found out that with uh, VR on Quest 2, it, it can't be too realistic because <laughs> and then we had to learn things about polygons and triangles and batches, oh, you know, and all this and that. <laughs> You know, like, oh, my God, I can't do this. I have to draw back a little bit, you know. And so that's been part of it. Mm -hmm. And then the other part is from uh, just a story standpoint, you don't want to, you want your, you're going through a cave and there's there's uh, like 145 rooms, rooms, rooms uh, in this, in this cave. It's big. Mm -hmm. And like 14 regions or levels. Um, it's, it's, it's really big and, and in depth, but you don't, you don't want to go into one cave after another and passageway and more cave, 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 cave. Of course. So I have to, I had to think in terms of, I had to add a little bit of story to it. Mm -hmm. And the original design didn't have a lot of story. It was more based around exploration, exploring. It was reactionary, and, yeah. And getting, and solving puzzles and obstacles and using objects. And that was kind of what it was, but in order to to graphically see something that's interesting, I had to add some story element of my own. Mm -hmm. 
um, and uh, and personalize the dwarves and and things like that uh, to give it a little more excitement graphically. Yeah. And that was that's been a bit of a challenge. Of course. Uh, how did you kind of like? So the original game is very much based on inputs. Like that's how you explore the game and how you interact with it, talk back to you, and everything. How did you kind of maintain that with VR? Like, and as from a design like standpoint, like. Well, that wasn't too hard because um, of my experience in designing adventure games in the past. Mm-hmm. Um, my our our first our first adventure games were like Colossal Cave with a parser. A parser means that you can you can input text some text, and then and then it talks back to you with mm-hmm. text or it something happens in the game. Um, and uh, at first our first games we it was just one and two words like uh, like Colossal Cave was. But then we, we got bigger sentences as we went on. But then I decided at some point to get rid of the parser okay. and, and text input and instead go with icons. You know? okay. So it would be like an eye to look or a hand for action. Kind of like when the mouse over in like, you know, the, uh, the old Sierra games where like it would be like, yeah, a, right. like a magnifying glass if you could inspect it yeah, or talk. Right. if you had that. Yeah, and that's then you could put in different icons yeah. depending if you wanted to d- have more. And so um, I had that experience. So I sort of just took that idea and put into the VR a little bit of the point and click idea. But um, I, we're not able to have too many of those icons, if you, if you want to say so. I've had to figure out how to add that communication without. But VR, it's, it's hard. It's different, yeah. It's different. So, but it's, that's basically yeah. the idea. But as, like, with yeah. VR as well, like, as you guys are doing this, you're learning as well. Yeah. So like, you know, even after Class okay, after you finish this project, you know, yeah. maybe you'll tackle VR again or you maybe go on to another project. But if you, hopefully you guys do. Well, we'll see how this game <laughs> we'll goes. We'll see how it goes, okay. Let's see how this one goes. Um, let me just see. Uh, so, let's see. After realizing for months, I realized I can write command... Uh, to the hair f- to run. I imagine the joy of actually being able to flee monsters on the woods in VR. Walking didn't quite cut it. So, like, I guess in, in the command base, like in VR, the, the experience of, of Colossal Cave will be different for a lot of folks as well because it's, it's a more visual experience as well. Like, Well, it's visual and, it's, and it is more of, of a cerebral, um, meaning you have to think. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's exploration. It's well, not... It's creepy ahead. at times. Yeah, we, go ahead. We have like some caves that we wander through where there's bats flying around you. Oh, yeah. and <laughs> I don't like bats. Uh, <laughs> and there's one cave, okay, like up the Awkward Canyon or something, and you're running through it, and the bats are there. And I was demoing for somebody, and I fell off the cliff. Oh, and no. suddenly I felt myself falling, and I was just oh, freaked yeah. out. And, um, and it is. And the people that were watching, uh, yeah, they could tell it was real. I, mean, I was just scared. Yeah. Because when you the get the right sound happening, yeah, you feel it and, drop your heart into uh-huh, something. Yeah. It's a, it, it is a different feeling when yeah. done right, and mm-hmm. and so we kind of know when we nail it. Yeah. Um, there's a few places in the game we just nail it. Oh uh, yeah, I think that's wild. VR is good for that though, because your visual and audio as well, like it's it's all being manipulated. So you can control that feeling quite well. Yeah, so, if, you, know. if you if you kind of can climb up a little bit and then go off the edge, without dying, uh, <laughs> <laughs> which you can do, um, and and you kind of jump down a little bit. It, you feel it in your stomach. You do. So there is a physicality to it. Okay. Well, Definitely. Well, I think with VR as well, like, yeah. I, I noticed someone in the chat's like, you know, I can't play VR. Like, it makes me very emotional. Like, that's a lot of, like, a learning curve for a lot of people. Well, I should well. say the yeah. game is also for non-VR. Oh, okay. We also oh, have yeah. a Windows oh, and yeah. a Mac version. Uh-huh. And Perfect, yeah. Yeah, yeah well, some people like VR and like wearing yeah. the headset, but... Not you know, everybody. Uh, not everybody. I oh, mean, yeah. No, that's important to say. You do not need to have, you know, a Quest 2 or, a, you know, a VR headset yeah. in order to play this game. And, uh, I mean, I just play it on my computer, you know, my, my PC and Windows. You don't have to hook up the big and headset my, and every my mouse, time. <laughs> and my yeah. mouse. You know, I play it. That, yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. Like, I prefer to play it like that as well. Yeah. You know, getting your VR set up and everything, yeah. like, uh, well, emotion sickness as well. But it definitely, I can understand the experience. Especially, though. yeah. This yeah. Kind of, well, the Roberta's done a lot of work to kind of cure nausea for people. Right. Oh, okay. Uh, I put a lot of thought into that. way different than most. Yeah, it's, uh, I found that on VR, there's a, a lot of dizziness problems and nausea. Yeah. And, uh, and I just said, well, this can't. We can't do this um, if it's going to be like this. You and, care about your players, and oh, yeah. I, I, I was, I, rem- I would think and think about the physicality of movement of a human body, 
is I'm I'm into exercise and mm-hmm. yoga and balance and and we took a boat around the world, um, and how, yeah, and so anyway, I I think I solved the dizziness problem. Okay. Yeah. Well, hopefully you know if people are here at GDC in San Francisco, they'll get a chance to play it. But uh, I just want to say a big thank you to uh, you Ken and you Roberta for joining us today. Our pleasure. And. Um, the game, it looks great. I, I had a chance to play it already, so it's going to... Oh. Again, if you're at GDC, please come try it. It's, oh. it's great. It's in our, in our booth. And again, thank you so much. Um, thank is you. there any yeah. like final words you guys want to say? Oh, actually, you go ahead. there was the Metal Jesus Rocks. Uh, you, you did a podcast with them, didn't you? Yes. Yeah. Metal like, Jesus. Well, Oh, that's yes. right. Yeah, yeah, that was Did a mention that great that's little podcast. I would, yeah, that that would be great to. He you was know. A great guy. He, so yeah. lovely. He's oh, he's, so, good, he's wonderful. Friendly he worked for friendly. you guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> worked for us long time like ago. Full yeah. circles again. I know everything. <laughs> everything is coming. It's all aligning like the everything stars. It's old. That's new exactly again. right. Yeah, like yeah. Cygnus is the star. Yeah, yeah. It's all aligned. It's all aligned. <laughs> it is. But no, genuinely, again, you guys have been fantastic. I'm so happy that you know you guys are back. You're going to meet something. I hope. After this game, you do continue to make stuff as well, because uh, you, of course, you have your fans. But this is a new start for you guys in in making games. So hopefully, we get to see you guys do a lot more. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Well, thank, again. You thank you very much. Yeah, thank have you. A, have a lovely Our rest pleasure. of your GDC. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye, bye.